Prince Harry and Meghan have deigned to return their RSVP for the King's coronation next month. But guess what? Only Harry is coming. Meghan is staying behind in California with the kids, and the palace said they're pleased to confirm Harry's attendance. Sources close to the Sussexes, meanwhile, saying Prince Archie's fourth birthday, which is actually on the same day as the coronation, was a big factor in the couple's decision. But a child's fourth birthday party, really? Seems a little bit like a convenient excuse for a more personal decision for Meghan to stay home in Montecito. And for once, this probably actually pleases both her critics and her supporters. It means she's staying out of the limelight while Harry gets to come home. My hunch is Harry has never been and will never be anti-British. He loves this country, but in this rebellion over the past few years, his words and his actions, they've hurt us. Uh, were you at all surprised by the decision, the announcement this afternoon? No, I thought it was always going to turn out this way, and I think it's the best solution, actually. Uh, Meghan, unfortunately, is a, a person who divides opinion. I, I, she probably doesn't wish to, but she does divide opinion. And I think she was over here, then there would be a huge debate about whether she was welcome or not. She might, her presence would possibly overshadow the coronation. But it's always been important that Harry should be here, be here for the biggest day in his father's life, really. Uh, Charles has made it clear that he still loves his son, whatever's gone on, that he wants him to be there. And so I'm very pleased that Harry's coming, and I think it's a much better solution that Meghan should stay back in California with the children, quite reasonably. Uh, Dickie, coming to you, your knowledge of the protocol, of course, of the royal household, the palace, uh, the late Queen, it is the right decision, surely, for Harry to attend this event? It's very much the right decision, given everything that's gone before. The Oprah interview, the six hours of Netflix, the book, uh, and all the little bits of interviews in between. Uh, people wonder, well, how can he show his face at the coronation? But it is the right decision. His father loves him, as Jenny rightly said. We heard in his, uh, his first address, following the death of his mother, where he sent his love to both Harry and Meghan in California. So it is the right decision. What I do hope is that it's not a distraction mm. because what will happen is the media will focus their attention on him, the photographers will focus attention, they'll haul out out of the woodwork all the body language experts and we'll get all sorts of things. I want to see us focusing on a once in a lifetime. For me, it's the second time because I saw the Queen's coronation, but I, I want to see the focus of attention on the King. It's his day and it's the, it, the people of Britain's day as well. And it certainly seems to uh, uh, beg distraction, like you said. Anything about Harry. Of course, people will be watching what his relationship will be like with William on the day as well. Perhaps we'll come back to Jamie on that, but first I want to come to you, Bonnie, on Meghan's decision to stay behind in, in Montecito with the children. Um, I think there was no other way, shortly. No, that's absolutely right. She made a mother's decision. She's still got little children. That is her son's birthday. Uh, she made the right decision. And I have to say, I'm actually quite moved in a way that Harry's decided to do this. It's very grown up. It's very proper. Uh, it's a tribute to his grand, who he loved, and his father. But most of all, his children, and I'm putting my historian's hat on, his children are probably two of the most extraordinary people ever born. Because on one side, his side, they're descended from every royal head that ever was, including the prophet, and on their mother's side, through her mother, they are descended from my ancestors, not my literal ancestors, but, this, but uh, uh, enslaved Africans. So you have this lovely combination, and one day, Harry's gonna sit these kids down and say, this is your heritage too. The other part, because these are gonna be American kids, they're gonna be brought up as Americans, they ain't gonna be called Prince Archie and Princess Lily Bet in the United States, I'm gonna tell you that. But nevertheless, they, they will see this other side. And it, it, they're going to be extraordinary individuals because of that. So I'm happy he's there because he can say, Dad, there's Dad. I was there. It, shouldn't they be there then, Lily Bet and Too little. And I wouldn't, I mean, I wouldn't bring them. They, are far, bring they them. are far too young. When you think of the king, that he was at his mother's coronation probably for about half an hour. He was three years old. old. He was three he, years he, old. Yeah. Yeah, he was three years old. No, the children should not be there. This is not a, a children's circus. No. This is a very devout service. Uh, it is a coronation, it is anointing uh, in the eyes of God, the king, and therefore, no, the children should not be there. They've got the right kids there, uh, George playing a role uh, and the other children playing a role, but no, Archie and Lily shouldn't be there. And George wanna... should be there. He is the third in line, so he, he should be he there. He is Second the third in line, sorry. He is, he is. Now, uh, let's get back to Jenny on the distraction uh, point, Jenny, uh, that Dickie brought up. Surely the presence of Harry in and of himself is just going to be something of a media circus. Is there any way around it?
Oh, it will be. It would have been more of a media circus had Megan been here as well. But, you know, we've only got ourselves to blame for this. And I've said for some months now that um, if Harry and Megan came, or even just Harry coming, what we should do, we, the media, should say also in attendance was the Duke of Sussex. We don't need to go wild about it. We don't need to bring in the body language experts that Dickie was talking about. Of course we will. Of course we will. That's what we do. But we've earned ourselves to blame. Um, but I, I agree and concur with, with uh, Dickie that this is Charles's day um, and that's where the focus should be. And I'm very sorry that in the lead up to the decision that's been finally announced today, um, there's been so much attention on um, Harry and Meghan. I mean, I think it is rude that they've taken so long to answer a very simple question. You're invited to this occasion. Are you coming? And, and they've kept us all on tender hooks for weeks and weeks. But, but Jenny, we were kept on tender hooks because we wanted to be on them, okay? We didn't have to pay so much attention to them. People do, and it's not necessary. I agree with you about, and, and Dickie, this is the king's day, and this is the king's day as long as we allow it to be the king's day. And I think that when Harry comes, I think he will contribute to it being the king's day. And not only that, his dad's day. And I'm very proud of him. I think it's a very mature decision. And it's I very good. I'd like to qualify what Bolly just said. She said, uh, um, we make the decision. Mm. We, the media, make the decision mm. that it is focus of attention on the king and on the queen consort and not on everybody else that is there. Yes, certain people do have roles to play and they will be seen visually uh, portraying that role. But the congregation, of which Harry is a part of, does not play a part in the, in the congregation coronation ceremony and therefore we in the media must focus attention on the big picture so this is your campaign dicky this evening to try and get the media to listen and but it won't happen they won't, yeah it, it won't they happen won't because there's all kinds dicky knows and, and jenny knows there's not just the media the print media there is social media there's all kinds of things happening they've been happening for two weeks on social media so harry coming i think and where he will be positioned and his, and his uh, uh, response to God save the king and all of that is going to be a deep focus. But he mm. has to be there. And I, like I say, I'm proud that he's decided to come. As part of the fabric of history, it does seem imperative. Look, Dickie, you were nodding along vigorously when Jenny was saying it was very rude of Harry Meghan to hold oh, out RSVP. Oh, incredibly rude. Why, why did it take them a month to reply? They either he or she or they knew that they were coming or they didn't. Harry knew he definitely had to be there and he should have responded immediately without waiting a month, without all this speculation that's gone on for over 30 days. But Dickie, we were speculating. I mean, who knows why it took them that long? I don't know. But we were speculating. I'm saying not you personally. No, I wasn't. I mean, it, it's, it's the public that's mm. speculating. And, the, and the, the more that we take ourselves away from these two individuals, as individuals, let this ceremony happen. I know it won't be like that, mm. but just let this ceremony happen. It is Charles's day. He's been waiting for, what, 67 years for it. So let's just let him have his day. Bringing Jenny back in on this, because it is, as uh, Dickie and Bonnie have been pointing out, it's, it's Charles's day, it's the King's day, it's also the country's day, it's going to be mm. street parties, it should be a very jubilant affair. However, it, it, this Harry visit, of course, will be part of the circus, as we've already discussed. Um, do you think that they can get past it? How do you think the royal family are going to deal with this? How do you think they're going to instill this sense of decorum? Well, it'll all go perfectly wonderfully. These occasions always do. Um, they will be polite and courteous to one another. William, by definition, has got a very important role to play uh, during the coronation ceremony. And therefore, I think he will be physically apart from Harry. So we won't be able to analyse their every look, their every movement. Uh, the two will be separated. Um, and there's no reason for them to, to meet at all, because I think Harry's going to fly straight in and straight out, as he did quite recently for a court case, apparently without seeing anyone. Uh, so there may be no meeting between the two brothers. And the animosity between the two, the two obviously, is still very, very deep. Um, so I think it will all go as smoothly as these royal occasions do go, and we will all try to draw some kind of conclusions um, about how they're looking at each other, but none of it will be realistic, I don't think. Um, I think the tensions are so deep and the rift so hurtful at the moment that it's going to take more than a flying visit by, by Harry to put things right. Um, just before we wrap up, I want to ask you both briefly, do you think the British public is going to be welcoming to Harry, Dickie? 
The British public are going to be welcoming for the coronation. It's the King's Day and they're going to focus on the King's Day and everybody else is just there. Harry is going to find it very difficult. He's going to feel very lonely because he's fallen out with his family. He is there as a matter of duty, but he's got no support. His wife's thousands of miles away in California and he's going to hack this one alone. Mm. Yeah. Well, as someone privileged to be a British citizen for a long time now and watching funerals and weddings, the British people will stand right up to this. It'll be beautiful. They'll let it all smooth out. And Harry will go home back to Montecito. It'll be fine.